Welcome back, everyone, to On the Level Leadership. Thank you for joining me today. This week, our American counterparts are observing Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and there are a great many leadership lessons that can be learned from this courageous and historical figure. And in today's day and age, it is imperative that we share this man's lessons because there are two perspectives here, the notion of leadership and the issue of race. And we cannot ignore the racial tensions that we are seeing globally, not just in America. That said, today I want to focus on the leadership lessons that Martin Luther King Jr. taught the world in how to lead a movement and the importance of how we should model the way even 55 years after his assassination in Memphis, Tennessee. So the first lesson I want to go through today is the notion of believing in yourself. MLK understood the power of advocating for oneself despite the obstacles and the opinions of other people around you. He was a strong believer in the power of the individual potential and that we can achieve anything we want if we stay true to ourselves. And the quote him directly, he stated, quote, believe in yourself and believe that you're somebody. Nobody else can do this for us. And while the context of this reference was to get black Americans to start believing in themselves and not depending on others' views of them to see them as people, and but to see themselves as worthy, it rings true true for anybody out there. Because if you want to succeed in life, you have to first believe in yourself and your ability to meet and overcome any challenges that might come forward to you. You have to believe that you're worthy of love, success, and freedom. Our belief in oneself can be altered by how we're raised, the environment that we're born into, and the challenges that we face. The failures that we have and the successes we have can also inform our belief in ourselves. But ultimately, practicing self-love and self-compassion is the way to this. And while belief in oneself is not always easy, I know I struggle with the it really is the way to leading a movement or leading your own life. The second lesson that I want to bring to your attention today is the notion of speaking out. Throughout his life, MLK Jr. was a vocal advocate for justice, equality, and civil rights. And he believed in speaking out against injustice and oppression and encouraged others to do the same. Kuzan and Posner referred to this as challenging the process. And as leaders, we learn how to speak out. We don't just sit by and watch things unfold, right? We step into the spotlight. And MLK is a very high profile example of the change as one can lead when one leans into their power and into their purpose. You may not be leading a civil rights movement, but as a leader in your organization and in your world, I want to ask you the question, how and where can you speak your truth and make changes happen? What stops you from doing that? Oftentimes it's fear. And to move beyond that fear, you have to have a greater purpose in yourself. MLK believed, and I quote, that standing up for the truth of God is the greatest thing in the world. This is the end, therefore purpose of life. He felt that leadership was a calling for him. It pulled him towards something. He didn't need to be pushed towards his decision to be a part of that movement. He was pulled towards it. That sense of purpose actually gave him the drive to continue and it actually encouraged others to join him. Lesson number three is how to unite and work together. MLK Jr. was a leader, but he also was a team player and he understood the value of working together towards common goals and ideals. And he knew that the doing so would create a united front and would inevitably create change. He often spoke of the power of unity and encourage different groups to come together to fight for a common cause. Dr. King, how are things shaping up now for tomorrow? Things are shaping up beautifully. We have people coming in from all over the country. I suspect that we will have representatives from almost every state in the union and naturally a large number of people from the state of Alabama. And we hope to see and we plan to see the greatest witness for freedom ever taken place that has ever taken place on the steps of the capital of any state in the South. To bring this back to leadership and the principles and research, this is what Kuzan Posner referred to as having a common vision or enabling others to act. MLK had a grand vision as clearly articulated in one of his most famous speeches where, quote, all of God's children, Jews, Negroes, whites, and Indians can join hands and sing free at last, free at last. As an amazing orator, he could get you to feel his vision. He was able to verbalize it in such a way where his vision became palpable. And as a result, people got on board. Understanding the power of many is how a movement is created. And it's how leaders gain those first followers that are needed and essential for a movement to continue to grow forward. The fourth top lesson here for leadership is the message of respect and love. One that MLK Jr. always believed in. He believed in treating everyone with respect regardless of race, gender, 
gender or sexuality. He emphasized the importance of loving one another and understanding that we are all connected. And though there are literally hundreds of phrases and takeaways from this man's speeches, one phrase that I think embodies the true nature of leadership is when he stated, quote, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? The most respected and admired leaders are those who can balance the notion of enabling the heart and keeping forward momentum. They're clear about their own biases and they learn how to challenge those biases. In fact, serving others not only gains their respect and loyalty and dedication of their team, but it enables an action-oriented group. I wanna ask you the question, when was the last time you felt loyalty or felt very positive towards a leader? Why do you think that was? It's probably because the leader made some kind of effort to connect with you, to allow you to thrive in your environment. Maybe you saw that the ego took a back seat to the health of the organization or the health of the staff that reported into that leader. And as a result, you would have likely seen productivity increases and success measures that were much more positively leaning. And when it comes to bias, let me tell you that we all have them, no matter how much melanin you have or don't have in your skin. If there's one thing that I can really encourage you to do, especially on today and this week, is to look inward and really look at your own biases and make a commitment to move past them. Today, more than ever, we need this message because we're all connected, like online. But yet it feels like we're totally disconnected as a human race, right? What we're seeing online is pretty clear. There's a lack of civility at times and a lot of language that causes division and hatred to grow. So it's imperative now more than ever for us all as leaders to demonstrate empathy and to encourage respectful discord and to encourage others to take a seat at the table and to express their perspectives no matter how different they might be. The fifth and last lesson in this leadership piece around Martin Luther King is the notion of taking action. ML K understood that in order for you to create sustainable change, you had to learn to take action. You couldn't just sit idly by and hope for the best. If you want, really want change and you want to successfully overcome it, you have to take action so that you can get momentum going to help push you to grow. It means dealing with your fears. It deals means getting out of your comfort zone. It means sticking your neck out. And for many, this is where the movement stops because when the rubber hits the road is when our fears take over and we stop all of our action steps and our movement forward. Remember that taking action does not have to be a big chunk. It can be little steps over time. So with that, thanks to a fellow YouTube channel whose link I'm going to include down below. I'm sharing with you a snippet of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s speech that talks about just how one can take action. Thanks again for watching, folks. See you next week. This is the most important and crucial period of your lives for what you do now and what you decide now at this age may well determine which way your life shall go. And the question is whether you have a proper, a solid, and a sound blueprint. And I want to suggest some of the things that should be in your life's blueprint. Number one in your life's blueprint should be a deep belief in your own dignity, your own worth, and your own somebodiness. Don't allow anybody to make you feel that you are nobody. Always feel that you count. Always feel that you have worth. And always feel that your life has ultimate significance. Secondly, in your life's blueprint, you must have, as a basic principle, the determination to achieve excellence in your various fields of endeavor. You're going to be deciding as the days and the years unfold what you will do in life, what your life's work will be. Once you discover what it will be, set out to do it, and to do it well. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. What is it by size that you win or you fail? Be the best of whatever you are. Finally, in your life's blueprint, must be a commitment to the eternal principles of beauty, love, and justice. Well, life for none of us has been a crystal star, but we must keep moving. We must keep going. If you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl, but by all means, keep moving.